The cock crows dawn. There's a hot December day ahead. On such a hot December day in 1836, a group of English settlers proclaimed this land the colony of South Australia. And here, 12 miles north of the capital Adelaide, where a gentle range of hills rolls down into a vast sweeping grassland, the pioneers were reminded of South England's Salisbury Plain. So they came, they built a town, called it Salisbury, and made it home. Ten years later, they built the parish church of St. John, and Salisbury grew and changed. Until today, when a new city stands on the plain, alongside Salisbury, across the road, as it were, from South Australia's early history. Elizabeth, an all-new city, the largest, the most imaginative urban development in the Commonwealth of Australia. Elizabeth, a short ten years ago, no more than a dream, an architect's plan, now well and truly established and growing rapidly. A young town, rich in young people, with its own shops, factories, offices, churches and schools. Home already to more than 40,000, the men, women and children that are the true Elizabeth. The now and the future. Who are these people? Who are they today, this morning? Jim Mountford, nationality Australian and third generation too, but a new Elizabethan, brought here by sunshine and open spaces, by business opportunities, by his own new home. Occupation news agent with a good eye and a strong right arm. Bernie Van Essen, nationality Australian, but newly so after 29 years Dutch born and bred. Occupation, milkman and earning good money. Nancy Glenn, new arrival from England. Married, mother of two. A working wife at Kenwood Peerless, electrical appliance manufacturer, and also from England. But uh, right now, occupation breakfast. William Glenn, likewise from England, likewise married, otherwise father of two, occupation draftsman. Judith Glenn, a shorthand typist in a hurry, already in love with Australia and with a boyfriend. Bruce McDermott, an older Elizabethan, six years here with Scotland now boyhood memory and his future, he hoped, very much a part of Judith. Occupation with one of Elizabeth's local banks in a year or so, a teller, but uh, paying out already. Azio Pascali, nationality Italian, with a sunny smile to match the morning. Azio's Australian citizenship is coming up soon, but the fine Mediterranean climate has made Elizabeth a home from home already. A place where you can say good morning and mean it.
Davis and Alan Bernie Burnside. Two schoolboys will be boys, the like you'll find the world over. Bluey and Bernie with different backgrounds and a lot in common. But of course, that's Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is fun, but there's always something happening. Wonder what they're doing there. Come on, let's look closer. Perhaps performance an old friend, or maybe just because it's such a fine day. Anyhow, instead of marching orders, the boys get their questions answered. Yes, Abby, there'll be a big ball here. See this with eight sides. That's an octagon. That's right. Right over there with enough seats to hold 1,400 people. Say, for a symphony concert or a school speech night. And some of the seats will be able to come out and make room for dancing at a ball. Or for indoor sports like badminton, basketball or table tennis. Yes, there'll be plenty of room for whatever you want. And there'll be another smaller, what they call an intimate theatre, for about 400 people to watch ballet or play. So that when it's finished, there'll be two theatres in one, as it were. And when will that be? Oh, quite a few months yet. And who can use it? Anybody and everybody. It's for the town, all of us. Say, that's really something. <laughs> well, it will be soon. And right now, new information and importance goes with them to school as they go talking excitedly of this newest comer to Elizabeth. The talk, the excitement, doesn't die. It's strong throughout the town, and every Elizabethan shares their interest. The new theatres are coming along well, Gwen. You see, we're lucky to be getting a building like that. Lucky? There's a lot more to it than luck. This centre is no something for nothing. Despite its youth, Elizabeth can already boast of an active arts council, a repertory company, a cine society, art groups, choral singers, and more sporting clubs than you can count on fingers and toes. In fact, some 60 or more associations, groups, societies. 60 or more good, hard-working reasons why for the building of the theatres. Until now, an old farmhouse, affectionately known as the studio, has been the popular meeting place. It is here that the weekends and the nights come alive with discussion, rehearsal, or the quiet concentration of still life painting. But a lot of the painting of the studio is neither quiet nor still. Saturday often sees the broader canvas of theatrical scenery given a new look for the next production. The sound of saws, hammers and laughter proves that as far as local rep is concerned, getting there is half the fun. By now, the civic theatres are also getting there, with the Octagon and the Shedley as the twin theatres are to be called, well and truly taking shape. Something to see, something concrete to talk about.
suggest in Elizabeth that building in progress but business as usual. And there's always plenty to do, whether you like to stroll in the sun, watch Aussie rules footy or soccer, or be in it and win it. Play and players, Elizabeth's new stage is nearly complete. The building is ready on target. It's time now for the finishing touches, the final coat of paint. But the painters in the octagon are not the only ones at work. In the Shedley Theatre, named after Jeff Shedley, chief design architect of the South Australian Housing Trust, the theatre's designer himself adds the final brushstrokes to his own 50-foot-long mural. Painters, carpenters, electricians, air conditioning engineers and sound technicians. One and all the specialists are busy, fitting and fixing, trying and testing. While the equipment moves in and the work goes on, those who plan to be among the first to use the new building are active too, making sure that they're not only the first up, but also best dressed. The producer for the Elizabeth Repertory's first Shedley production takes rehearsal in the still unfinished theatre, demanding that those who play clowns speak no more than a set down for them and do that well. Cast and stage hands alike, they look forward to their new first act in luxury. No school hall limitation, no cumbersome self-made, only just portable stage. No struggling with lights, no makeshift curtain, but for all that, no less fun. For as always, the play's the thing. Also, with a part to play at the opening festival, the Elizabeth Theatre's orchestra, specially formed for the occasion and rehearsing for a special performance. The Elizabeth Harmony Choir and the Elizabeth Singers are two other local groups who, like all Elizabeth, are now busy making ready for the opening day and night of the first Elizabeth Theatre's festival. The first week's festival program will feature a formal opening ball, ballet, band, orchestral and choral concert, a pageant of music, comedy, drama and dance, and already advanced bookings show every sign that full house signs could well be needed. Saturday, August 21st, 1965. His Worship, the Mayor of Elizabeth, introduces Mr. J.P. Cartledge, Chairman of the South Australian Housing Trust, who formally hands the theatres over to the people of Elizabeth. And His Excellency, Lieutenant General Sir Edric Bastian, Governor of South Australia, quotes the theatres as good examples of what can and should be done, not only for today, but for generations yet unborn. And in unlocking the doors, he urges Elizabeth to take full advantage of the theatres, not merely to pay lip service and stay away. Certainly, all Elizabeth seems to be at the official opening ball. The Octagon does, in fact, have its first full house. The Mayor and Mayoress of Elizabeth, Mr. and Mrs. Gilchrist, are the guests of honour for the evening. For the City Council, who, for the past year, have been very active in organising and financing the theatres, have now vested control in a board of management. Dressed as formal, but otherwise, informality and good fun is the order of the evening. There is little speech-making, but a lot of talk, and the dancing goes on into the wee small hours. 
From Dancing in the Octagon to Dance in the Shedley. The other opening night, and the honor goes to a local ballet group. How will it go? What will the critics think? And the folk of Elizabeth, just as interested in their new theater as they are in the ballet, what will they think? Curtain up! Now it's too late to do anything more than has already been rehearsed. Your best has to be good enough. But what are they thinking out there? Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, milkman, mother, son, and student, stenographer, father, and newspaper delivery man. Different backgrounds. And what in common? Australia. A city called Elizabeth. And tonight, the ballet. Final curtain? Oh, no. While the audience leaves tonight, the stage is set for tomorrow. And omens are good for a long, successful season. And the company? The new Elizabethans have parts of plenty for new players. The scene is changing. Stand by for the second act. Beginners, please. <laughs> 